Alright, season two of the- uh, Oh wait, hold on. Alright, season two of this whole stupid YouTube adventure. Let's get it going. I got some new avatar art. I won't be needing this anymore. I, I got more than zero subscribers. My voice no longer sounds quite as much like the pain struggles of a feeling transvestite that I did in my first videos. I got a couple more people joining me along the way that I grabbed from elsewhere. Y'all know who you are. Welcome aboard. Here we go. So, for this video, I'm gonna be, um... Uh, I'm going to... Uh, uh, all right, let's see. Are there any songs I know that I can like do a cover for? Um, no, okay, that didn't work. Um, are there any games out that I could just like talk about for like 15 minutes? Let's see here. Just pop this in real quick. Uh, okay, my CD drive might not actually be connected, so never mind that. Has that Payday 2 song come along? Is this like in a state that I can show off and talk about yet? Hell no, it is not. I need to make. I need to find an idea for a video. I gotta go find. I need to find the video. I, is there a video out here? Is there a, is there a video over no? Uh, uh, why is this room like barricaded from all this stuff? Is is there a video in here? Uh, I can't. Uh, okay, I gotta like move this stuff out of the way first. All right, let's see. Is there a, is there a video? In here? There has, like, got to be something I can talk about, though, um, let's see, Silent Hill, no, not really done that yet, uh, you may Nikki. Okay, here we go, here we go, so this one is actually done. So this is what the video is going to be about. I am going to show you guys how to create a song in the style of you may Nikki. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make a uh, pretty simple little, like, pattern loop sort of thing like this. And there you go, that's um, pretty much all there is to it. Um, thank you for joining me in this video, I will see you guys- No, no, cause there's gotta be something, there's gotta need weather. That's, that's it, that's the one, that, that's the one, that's the one. This is what, all right, this is what we're doing. Okay, this isn't like a completed thing though. I worked on this like a very long time ago and I just never finished it. Like it's only a minute and 10 seconds long. So I'm gonna try to finish it and I will get back to you when I have more stuff to show off here. Can someone explain to me why I used an 808 kick? in the song was supposed to sound like other child music. You know, I'll be like completely honest though, a part of me still respects that decision, so I'm gonna save this as a version two, just so that old version can uh, remain for all of eternity on my hard drive. I need to find a different kick for this. I am actually going to go out of my way to try and use as many FL Studio default samples as I can because like I, I know the FL Studio like factory default sample hip hop beat isn't the exact same aesthetic as weather channel music but I'm just like I, I, I get this sensation that there is some sort of overlap between the two that that is going to feel very right to me. So I think that's what I'm going to try to go for here. I mean, like, listen to this piano. You're telling me that this song would sound better if I use one of Archeria's professional sounding Piano 5 virtual instruments rather than FL Studio's default piano sort of like... That is not the piano. 
you're telling me that this isn't good enough for this. This is exactly as good as it needs to be. Why are... Why, uh, wait, why are there two different bases? I, I made this like three years ago almost. I, uh, you don't. Uh, this might take a little bit of patchwork. Okay, so I know this isn't really like that complex, but I just spent like two or three days straight working on this song, and I really cannot think of anything else that would like add to it. Like, I'm pretty sure if I try to add anything more on top, it would kind of just take away from the overall thing. Like, for an example, uh, these are the drums. And I considered uh, putting this on there. But I feel like that's just like more distracting than it needs to be. Like it needs to be very, very simplistic. But like these drums, like these drums should not be doing anything fancy. They just need to be there so that like once the other instruments come in, like they kind of really stand out more. But anyway, let me break this down. Let me let me show you what you're gonna need here. So you're gonna need like a weird cloudy sort of pad synth noise thing like this. Um, I turned this into like a synth by putting this uh, volume envelope on it. And I also have a different thing at the beginning of the song that isn't really meant to be like musical at all. It's just kind of like a noise that happens. And then we have FL Studio's default Rhodes piano uh, come in with these notes right here. Now for the bass, um, there's a lot of different styles of Weather Channel music, of course, like if you go to the uh, Weather Scan playlist, there's a lot of different types of things, and this is based on not really any one in particular, but a couple of different ones that have the same kind of vibe to them. And this bass is like the central focus of that vibe right there. It's just, it's very, very like simple. I'm using the Synth 1 preset for it, and there really isn't like much else to do with it. Like I considered adding this wave shaper on top to make it slightly more growly, but that's just not really right for this. So I just slightly boosted it in the middle so that the notes are slightly more audible, but otherwise I just left it alone. The bass notes are deceptively simple. Like they feel very like high intensity and funky, but they are just like, fifths basically like it's just you yeah, got like there's the only notes it's just g sharp and c sharp and then like it starts to sound slightly more complicated later on but it's it is still just the same thing i just like took and copy pasted and moved it all down to things like that like it is very, very simplistic. I right, now the drums. I have two different styles of drums in different parts of the song. The first one is just like this incredibly basic sort of thing. Really not meant to do anything fancy, just it's it's just there to keep the beat basically. And then later in the song, so you set them up to think it's just gonna be this simple little drum loop, but then you hit them with the conga. The effects on the drums are pretty standard, like I slightly bass boosted the kick, so it's like... not horribly weak like that. Everything has reverb on it, like, and there's just, there's so much reverb in this song. Also, I do not label these things properly, I don't know why I even bothered doing this one three years ago, but I did not do it for the rest. So like the kick's got the reverb and the bass boost, um, everything else is set to channel 5, which is just a reverb, um, cause these are all like fairly similar, like it, I, I could go into more detail and put each of these on a separate mixer channel, but like, I would probably end up using like pretty much the exact same reverb on all of them anyway, so like it, it, it's fine. The only exception is this shaker down here, which I have put on insert 3 so I can boost this frequency a little bit, because otherwise it's just like... Yeah, that, that's not right. Oh uh, yeah, I just realized actually I should probably be sending this to insert 5 or all my other things are where all the reverb is, because there's no reverb on here, and I actually have another thing down here that controls this secondary reverb thing, which causes this to happen.
Cause uh, this this area just needs to be very echoey over here. You'll see why in the actual song. But this is the normal reverb, and then this is the extra one. And down here is much more like big and spiky, because I set the diffusion down a little bit. Like if you if you do it all the way down like this, it becomes like I, I honestly have no idea like what this is supposed to visually represent. But um, the spikier it is, the more like weird and. Uh, you just get those kind of weird noises, so like I don't want it too far down, but just enough so that you hear it a little bit. And there's just a little bit of that weird, like, echoey distortion going on. Now you gotta have a little synth that goes like... Absolute necessity. Nothing special going on with the effects, I just have a high pass filter here that goes down towards the end of the song like this. For the piano, you're gonna just wanna go ahead and drench that boy in reverb. I have no idea why it looks like this over here when like this is how it's supposed to look. Cause I made this again like three years ago, so I don't know why this window is missing half of this thing. But it still works, so whatever. Now I know for a damn fact that I did not like think particularly strongly about what I was doing here. I just I know I just put down random notes that sounded good together. I had no knowledge of chords or how notes were supposed to go together when I wrote this, so like, I mean, this right here is proof you do not need to know music theory to be able to write this kind of stuff. Not that it's the most amazing chord progression in the world, but it really doesn't have to be. It's weather channel music. And then over here, just, you know, a little bit of freestyling, nothing fancy at all. And then halfway through the song, I made a sort of like, not necessarily dramatic shift, but I changed the instruments around a lot all of a sudden. So the piano is replaced with this uh, Rhodes right here. Very, very jazzy. This chord progression, however, I do have memory of writing because I just wrote it like two days ago. Now I know it looks complicated because it kind of is, but um, here's the secret to writing jazzy chord progressions. You just kind of go like, um... Like, I, I am literally just hitting random notes that sound good together. Like, I, I don't even know, I wouldn't even be able to tell you what chords these are. Like, if someone with a master's in music theory wants to tell me the name of each and every one of these chords, be my guest, but uh, I just did the things that sound good. Cause jazz, like, jazz does not care, jazz just does whatever it wants. Uh, you have, you tend to see a lot of chords where there's like two notes right next to each other like this that you would normally try to avoid probably. But jazz, jazz don't care about none of that. Jazz do what it wants. I wanted to have more notes here, but um, like I ran into the situation where like every single note I tried just didn't sound good at all. Like, I just had to kind of go with this because like this particular chord I felt like needs to have this sort of pure feeling to it without all these other excess notes all around. The only weird thing that I really like intentionally did was I, other than putting like two notes right next to each other like that, I used notes that weren't in the right key for like every other chord. And by that I mean just like there's a normal chord and then there's this one. And this one uses F which is not supposed to, like, it's not in the key. But it sounds good like that, it sounds jazzy like that. But yeah, that's really all I did. I just, like, tried different combinations of keys until I got what I liked. Because when it comes to music theory and, like, my knowledge on chords, all I really know is, I know that's a C major. I know that's a C major 7th, 9th, 11th, 13th, so on. But that's pretty much all I know. I just I I just click on the notes and it makes the sounds happen. I I, I also put a stereo enhancer on it just to make sound a little bit fuller, as opposed to. And acoustic bass is absolutely vital. So I'm using this uh, meat bass thing. I have it set to legato mode with glide turned up a little bit, which is very important for this. When it's in legato mode, you can put another note slightly before the main one, and then it'll slide up to that. You can hear like how important that is to the overall like feel. Like 
That is completely different. That, that was very important. You gotta get yourself an acoustic bass with some slide notes on it. Another important thing to know is that it's not just doing C, G, C like you may expect it to do where it's just like the bass note and then the fifth and then the uh, bass note an octave higher. It's actually like doing C, G, D. I'm not sure why, but this specific pattern of bass note and then fifth and then like sliding from an octave up to like the note above the next octave of the bass note is a pattern that you hear a lot in these kinds of songs. And it took me a long time to like figure out what it was for some reason, but I, I figured out this is, this is what you gotta do. It's very, very useful for this kind of aesthetic. And finally, the real star of the show, the icing on the cake of everything else. So, I'm very confused by this, because I, I feel like this is supposed to sound terrible, but... Like, it's it's actually not really that bad. It, it actually sounds better than FL Studio's default saxophone for some reason. Because see, the thing is, DVS makes some, uh... Debatably high quality virtual instruments, but for some reason I just I can't really find fault in this in this one. Like the DVS saxophone, it it's powerful. There's this post that Toby Fox made a while ago in which he recommends various virtual instruments, and for DVS saxophone he simply says, "Don't." But then you use it in the Metaton EX theme for some reason, and it sounds amazing. So like I. I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about this thing, but I guess I'll use it for this. My only real complaint is that if I have it start perfectly on the B like it's supposed to, I, it feels like it's lagging slightly behind, so I just moved it forward a little bit. I mean, it's like barely noticeable to begin with, and I might just be crazy, but this sounds slightly better to me. And I don't think there's much more to say. Um, I have a stereo enhancer on the saxophone, and I forgot to mention I also have a little bit of a bass boost EQ for the acoustic bass. I also have a modulation clip down here for the pad, which controls the Mod X wheel here for the fast LP filter. And yep, that is the entire song, so oh wait, uh I also put this thing over here so that it like ends properly so the snare has time to ring out. So time to actually show you the song. Oh my god, I'm so disorganized. Please just let me get to my green screen. Just let me get I'm just trying to get to the Oh wait, one last thing I forgot to mention. I messed around with the velocities a lot for all the different notes. Um not on every instrument, but on like a lot of them, like the saxophone the roads, the piano, and so on, like the drums a little bit too. Um, and like this isn't always necessary, but in cases like this it just makes it sound a lot better when you have the extra little articulation, like... Compare that to... It's kind of subtle, but it can still go a long way. Alright, let's, let's get to the... let's, let's get it going now.
By the way, I want to try something. Go ahead and comment any sort of like noun or adjective like chocolate or purple, like the, a word basically. And then in a future video, I'm going to look through them and pick something at random to use as the basis for a song. And I then have to like figure out, for example, if somebody says cinder block, I then have to figure out like musically what the essence of cinder block is somehow and just like see where that brings me and what kind of song I end up generating from that. But like maybe I would make it sound really really rough and heavy or something like that. Like I don't really know. I'm gonna give myself a lot of creative liberty with it but I as long as I like it, it has something to do with as long as I can make some sort of excuse for why it relates to that word. So I go ahead and do that and I will sort all the comments into like some sort of thing that will randomly select something for me. Oh, and you don't have to like just put the word, like if you wanted to say something else you don't have to make a separate comment or anything like that. I uh, I don't think I'm gonna have much of a problem sifting through them, I don't think I'm gonna be overwhelmed. I'm probably gonna like 10, no that is being way too generous, I'm gonna like 5. If I get more than 5 I will be very happy. <laughs> Uh, and if you're watching this like months into the future, uh, you probably don't have to bother because I would have probably already made the video by then. I'm not sure when I'll make it, but I will try to get around to it as soon as I can. So I will see you all next time.